We're going to turn now to political analyst David Yonkai. He joins us live in the studio this morning. David, thank you for uh, that turnaround from a late night into an early morning. We know it's not always easy. <laughs> not a problem at all. Happy to be here. And Dave, first we'll talk about Tom Wolf. Uh, yes. Not really a surprise there with Wolf winning so heavily. The amazing journey of Tom Wolf. A year ago, nobody would have ever suspected that Tom Wolf would even have been a factor in the governor's race. But when you have $10 million of your own money to put into a campaign and you have a very good ad campaign that resonated with a lot of people, uh, he came out ahead. And I think that he um, uh, got near 60% of the vote, which confounded political experts, if you will, because yesterday everybody was saying that he would have to make sure that he would break even in Philadelphia. And of course, he did more than break even. He slaughtered uh, the hometown uh, people in Philadelphia, Allison Schwartz and Montgomery County's um, uh, Rob McCord. Talk a little bit about now heading into the general election come fall. Obviously, we saw the ad there with um, Governor Corbett kind of already going after Tom Wolf before the primary even happened. What do you see coming and campaigning towards uh, the, the general election? Well, I think the ads are going to be very important. And, you know, getting back to Wolf's initial ads, I think the reason why they resonated with people is because he threw $10 million into his own campaign. He's a rich guy, and people normally don't like rich guys, but he made rich guys again being cool because, you know, people thought he could be on an island someplace, but what he did is he decided to run for governor. The ad campaign against uh, him is going to be very interesting because Corbett became a great guns against everybody and that's what happens when an incumbent who's down on his luck in terms of the polls is going to do I think that I think that uh, just from a personal standpoint of meeting Wolf a couple of times and seeing the way that he interacts with people I think he's going to confound Corbett because I think Corbett is going to be very frustrated because I think that anything that Corbett is going to throw at him he's just going to be very calm and say well yeah but I met Tom Wolf and a couple of times on the campaign trail and one time during the debate um, one of the people came up to him and said, hey, you killed it last night at the debate. And he said, no, I didn't. I just told them the facts. And that showed me that this was like Mr. Cool running against maybe Mr. I hope I'm going to win again. All right. Good stuff from uh, David Yonkai. It's cool to be a rich guy uh, again. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and if you have money to throw around, great. You know, and I would much rather have a guy say, I'm going to use my money to maybe try to do something good. You know, because I don't see an agenda with the guy. Maybe there is. Maybe something will come up, but I don't see an agenda at this point. All right, we're going to talk with you a little bit more, David, uh, as we uh, progress throughout the morning. Thank you so much. Okay. We appreciate that. Right in for more on the decision not to change the government in Lackawanna County, we turn to political analyst David Yonkai. Uh, he joins us now live in the studio He's had earlier this morning. David, morning. Uh, they will not change the form of government, but it was a very close vote. Was that surprising at all? Well, it was surprising because I thought the vote would have been close to the other side. I really thought that the... Uh, uh, the the uh, vote yes people would have prevailed given the high taxes in Lackawanna County and also the fact that, you know, the previous two county commissioners, Munchak and Cadero, are now away for like an eight to ten year vacation. However, let me just say this, um, you know, government, people complain about government and people don't like government. But man, if you try to change my government, we're going to try to stop you. And I think what happened was that with Lackawanna County, this was like the first try that they tried to change the charter. In Luzerne County, it took three tries and 31 people going to jail in 2009 to have that thing changed. So I'm thinking that um, it's a surprise, but not really a surprise. The money spent on this was incredible. You had two sides. You had the current county commissioner saying it's a good form of government and also too it was kind of like a hybrid thing because what happened was they wanted to change the commissioner form of government but yet last year the voters um, um, kind of put a stamp on the fact that they wanted to keep the row offices mm -hmm. so it's not really true home rule reform that they were trying to sell and somewhere in the back of my mind I'm thinking could that have been um, a factor in this election where people would say well okay all you want to do is change the commissioner for of government you still have the row officers why don't we just keep what we have right now Change is slow to come. We'll see what will happen in the coming years, I yes, guess, in Lackawanna County's government. I don't think they're going to give up. I think they're going to try to come back to do something like this again. But I think that it's going to take a little while if that this happens. And, you know, to the people who wanted this to take place, the yes voters, first try, you could always try again. That's right.
All right, David, thank you so much. We'll okay. see you back here in another half an hour with more. And for more on the local races, we're going to turn now to political analyst David Yonkai. He's been helping us out all morning, kind of looking into some of the races. Um, I want to talk now about the um, 17th District for Congress. Yes. Of course, we have the Democrat Matt Cartwright, and uh, we're finding out this morning who will be challenging him come the fall. Schuylkill County Corner, David Moylan. Uh, was that a surprise? That I am stunned. <laughs> because when I went to bed last night, I thought Connolly had won. Con Matt Connolly was one of the people who went everywhere in the 17th District. And I thought for sure that he was going to win. Dr. Moylan, God bless him. I mean, he just uh, did his campaigning in Schuylkill County, but he never responded to any um, League of Women Voters questionnaires. He never showed up at any uh, debates that were held up here. So that kind of surprised me. What's interesting about this dynamic is that Matt Conley, I think, has, in losing, has uh, staked out a uh, claim for himself in the Republican Party because he ran a very good campaign. Matt Dietz, his opponent in that area, in the Wind Gap area, the Pocono area, same thing. The interesting thing about Dr. Moylan, he is from Schuylkill County. And when Matt Cartwright became a congressman uh, during the 2012 primary, he beat incumbent Tim Holden, who was a native of Schuylkill County and was the Schuylkill, Schuylkill County Sheriff at one point. It will be interesting to see if Dr. Moylan could garner up support of Democrats in Schuylkill County to oppose Cartwright. But uh, I understand that Moreland is going to be running against um, Obamacare and the Affordable Health Care Act. And I just think that that's a non-starter in this district, mainly because you can't overturn um, a measure that's the law of the land. But I think it's going to be interesting between, um, you know, Dr. Moylan and Matt Cartwright. But from an entertainment standpoint, I would have <laughs> loved to have seen Matt Connolly uh, go off against um, um, uh, Matt Cartwright because it would have been incredible. All right, well, big win. The voters of yeah. Schuylkill County definitely heard they last night. Yes. Yeah, definitely. They showed us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, thank you so much. We're going to check back in Good. with you. And for more on the governor's race, we turn to political analyst David Yonkai, who joins us, uh, who's been joining us all this morning. Good thank morning, you so yes. Much. David, we'll talk a little about Tom Wolf, yes. owner of arguably the state's most popular Jeep right now. And yes. that's been a, a big focal point of his campaign. Why have his ads been so successful? Well, I think all of the stars were aligned for this particular candidate and Tom Wolf. First of all, you have to look at the ad campaign. The success of any ad campaign begins with a good first killer ad. And what's better than having teenage daughters bust their dad on camera and say, well, our dad's a little bit different. He drives a Jeep. We're rich, but he drives a Jeep. That's the first thing. The second thing is, we had the most horrible winter in terms of bad weather. What do people do in the wintertime? They basically are in front of the television, and they saw Tom Wolf constantly. The third part of this campaign was that he had opponents that were basically his best friends. Rob McCord appeared very angry in terms of his attacks. Um, Allison Schwartz was deemed too liberal, and Katie McGinty just never stopped talking. So you have all those three things happening together. And plus, the attack ads really didn't work against him. And we had talked a little bit earlier about the attack ads, and you had talked about uh, the ads um, against Wolf that he sold his business and then took money because he sold his business. Well, I'm gonna sell you this watch. You're gonna give me money. I'm not gonna take the money. I mean, it just mm -hmm. didn't ring true. And, and so I'm thinking that in the general election, if people are gonna be attacking him, I don't see, unless there is some incredible skeleton in his closet or in one of those, you know, like kitchen cabinet warehouses that he has, <laughs> I don't see how they're going to try to attack him except maybe say that he's a tax and spend Democrat and he's the same old liberal. All right, well, we'll see what happens. In the meantime, you're going to stick around for us in just a little bit. We'll talk sure. to you more about some of the local races. We'll turn to political analyst David Yonkai, who has been helping us out all morning, taking a, a closer look at some of these races. One of the big things uh, this time around was redistricting. It had an effect on a lot of the races. You saw the 112th, 115th. Tell us uh, how you think that that played out in the outcomes. Well, I think that what happens with redistricting is people have to understand that elections have consequences. And these were all Democratic 
specific districts. And when redistricting happens, that happens at the state level from the party in power from the 2010 census. So the Democrats basically had districts that were carved out that would have been advantageous to um, the Republicans. Uh, Dr. Davis Hare and uh, Karen Bobak, their district was reconfigured, but it was reconfigured to help Bobak. But, you know, she had a Republican challenger, and of course he knew that. Um, that 112th race was very contentious. Um, that happened because of the redistricting and because of the power of the people in Harrisburg during the last census, which are the Republicans. And I think it's the lesson that people have to understand that elections have consequences. And if you don't think a governor's race is important, it is, because these are the people that are going to be redrawing the district. And I think that there are a lot of people in the 112th who need to know that, because you had two decent representatives. Now, one is the odd man out, and you had a very contentious campaign. The good news about this is that for as um, vitriolic as this campaign was, uh, Kevin Haggerty and Frank Farina shook hands yesterday and, you know, um, bygones are bygones right now, and I'm sure that both are going to have promising political careers. But it was a mess because of that redistricting, and it happened just because um, it was a uh, power play to, you know, um, uh, make the 115th district safe for Republicans. And you heard Frank Farina say in that 112, not only does he have to worry about his current 115, right. but now 112 as well. He has to, to pick up the pace quickly. So you're doing yeah. double duty. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. Definitely mm -hmm. interesting. Thank you so much, David, for all your, your wealth of knowledge for us this morning. We really appreciate it. Just very it. happy to be here. Thank you for having me. You got it.